Chris. <laughs> Fuck. Our journey has to start with the birth of CERN in 1954. Nestled near Geneva, Switzerland, it's here that the world scientific community unites in a quest to unravel the secrets of particle physics and the fundamental forces of the universe. Born from the collaborative spirit of 12 member states, CERN has evolved to include 23 nations, showing the power of what global cooperation can do when it comes to pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. Yet. Even as CERN stands as a beacon of scientific progress, they are not immune to conspiracy theories, especially when they unveiled the enormous Large Hydron Collider. Before unleashing the colossal LHC, apprehensions ran high. There were genuine fears that its high energy experiments could trigger cataclysmic events, leading to doomsday scenarios. Many have suggested that CERN's experiments, particularly those conducted at the LHC, that the high energy collisions might generate microscopic black holes that could grow and swallow the planet. But can CERN create black holes? The creation of black holes at the Large Hadron Collider is very unlikely. However, some theories suggest that the formation of tiny quantum black holes may be possible. CERN stated that the observation of such an event would be thrilling in terms of our understanding of the universe, and that it would also be perfectly safe. Two types of black hole. Black holes form in space when certain stars, much larger than our sun, collapse on themselves at the end of their lives. They concentrate a very large amount of matter in a very small space. They are so dense that the gravity they exert is such that not even light can travel out of them. This would be an immense problem for the world, obviously, especially if one were to form in the middle of Switzerland. But what the speculations about the black holes at the LHC could refer to are the particles that are produced in the collisions of pairs of protons. These are microscopic or quantum black holes. A simulation of a quantum black hole detected by the Atlas experiment before it decays via a process known as Hawking radiation. The physical part of the LHC experiments, colliding particles, do happen in nature all the time. It's how we know that recreating these collisions pose no threat to the Earth. Nature's collisions also reach much higher energies than those at the LHC. This is what was stated by CERN scientists and other physicists in the field. So maybe we really have nothing to worry about when it comes to the instantaneous creation of a black hole, since it seems like particles don't possess the necessary amount of mass to create an actual black hole. But take a look at this. I mean, oftentimes people think about black holes as these gargantuan structures that form from collapsed stars. There's a big one in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, weighs four million times that of the sun. The photograph of a black hole in the galaxy M87 that got the world excited a couple of years back, 55 million light years away, billions of times the mass of the sun. But the reality is anything, if you compress it enough, becomes a black hole. If you take an orange and you squash an orange down sufficiently small, according to Einstein, it becomes a black hole. So these things don't have to be gargantuan. The flip side of it is we also typically have an intuition that black holes are really dense, right? That's usually the way we think about them. But if you make something sufficiently large, regardless of how low its density is, it will also become a black hole. So you can make a black hole out of air by just having enough air. If you have enough air, sufficiently large sphere of air, it would become a black hole too with the density of air. So all the intuitions that we typically have about black holes, that they have to be dense and they have to be gargantuan, not right. So black holes are just a part of the elemental structure of reality itself. Yeah, when you look at Einstein's equations, right in his mathematics, there's a little formula that you can see where it says, if you have any mass M, whatever mass you want, and you squeeze it into a radius R, that's less than two times Newton's constant, 2g times m divided by c squared, speed of light squared. A formula, details don't matter. But you take any mass, if the radius within which that mass sits is less than 2gm over c squared, it is a black hole, period, end of story. 
according to Einstein. So if anything can create a black hole, no matter the size, and I'm not too sure what CERN is claiming to be safe would be entirely accurate. But man, if anything of any size is compressed past that point and becomes a black hole, I wonder how many black holes are floating around here. Cause I'm pretty sure you guys have realized this, but space is dark as hell. Only source of light in existence are the suns that litter the universe. But other than that, it's completely black. We probably wouldn't be able to see it, especially with our current technology, but what if we're inside a massive black hole? According to CERN, the creation of a black hole at the LXC would confirm some scientific theories that states our universe is not just four dimensionals, three space plus one time dimension, but that our universe has many more dimensions than four. CERN states that it would be quite a spectacular philosophical outcome in the same way that the theory of relativity or of quantum mechanics revolutionized our way of thinking. Discovering the existence of extra dimensions would be a major new milestone in our understanding of the universe. Damn, especially if we can recreate the process without failure. There is no obvious application for knowing this, but this will really open up a whole new world of physics and possibly milestones such as unlimited energy and getting closer to understanding the origin of everything. Conspiracy theorists have, for years, raised alarm about the LHC experiments, claiming that running the high energy particle collider could wipe out our planet and even the entire universe. According to an article called The Inquisitor, they reported fears in doomsday circles that experiments with the world's largest particle accelerator could lead to a cosmic catastrophe. The fears heightened following alarm at the news that the newly upgraded LHC would generate particle collisions at nearly double the energy levels achieved in previous runs of this experiment. According to conspiracy theorists, the experiments could recreate conditions similar to those that existed at the time of the Big Bang creation of the universe or generate microscopic black holes and other exotic particles that could unleash powerful destructive forces. The famous physicist Stephen Hawking, before his passing, caused further fears when he said the experiments have the worrisome potential of generating cosmic scale catastrophe. He says such experiments could generate what he termed a vacuum bubble that caused space and time to collapse catastrophically through a vacuum decay. However, conspiracy theorists ignored his statement that the current LHC is not sufficiently powerful enough to generate energy states that could destroy the universe. The Higgs potential has the worrisome feature that it might become mega stable at energies above 100 billion giga electron volts. This could mean that the universe could undergo a catastrophic vacuum decay with a bubble of the true vacuum expanding at the speed of light. This can swallow us at any time and we wouldn't even see it coming. A particle accelerator that reaches 100 billion giga electron volts will be larger than Earth and is unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. In 2022, scientists made a remarkable discovery after the European Organization for Nuclear Research CERN activated the Large Hadron Collider with a powerful new energy beam. They detected an unexpected development. A crack had appeared in Earth's magnetic field. This unusual phenomenon left scientists both puzzled and intrigued. Speculations arose that perhaps CERN's experiments had inadvertently opened a portal to another realm, sparking visions of interdimensional beings stepping through. However, it's essential to clarify that no interdimensional beings materialized through this crack in Earth's magnetic field. What did occur though, was the ingress of potent solar winds while the rift remained open for 14 hours. Our magnetic field plays a vital role in maintaining our orientation, ensuring compass needles point north. Beyond this, the field shields the Earth from the harmful effects of solar winds that could otherwise erode our protective ozone layer, leaving our planet inhospitable. Now, it may just be a coincidence that there was a crack in the Earth's magnetic field after the activation of the LHC, but that is entirely too close to a lot of people's comfort. And it does not help the organization in calming the people and their donors' worries and concerns. But amidst these worries and concerns, CERN has achieved remarkable feats that have reshaped our understanding of the universe. One of its most celebrated achievements was the discovery of the Higgs boson, often referred to as the God Particle. 
This groundbreaking revelation confirmed the existence of the Higgs field, deepening our comprehension of the universe. To go into detail on this will require a different video, a whole lot of research, maybe even a few scientists to help me out with it. But the simplest way I can try and describe the Higgs boson field is that there is a specific field that permeates through everything and that it's responsible for bringing different elementary particles like electrons and quarks into existence. And then those particles continue on to form the matter we interact with on a daily basis. CERN's influence extends beyond particle physics. It's where British scientist Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, transforming the way we communicate and access information. The web was originally conceived and developed to meet the demand for automatic information sharing between scientists and universities and institutes around the world. I didn't even know CERN was involved with the invention of the World Wide Web back in 1989. A lot of greatness has definitely, definitely come out of this place. We cannot deny that. But at its core, CERN remains dedicated to advancing particle physics. And the crown jewel of its efforts is the awe-inspiring Large Hydron Collider. It's what CERN is mainly known for, and most likely what the majority of the organization's budget goes to. But you know, where innovation flourishes, conspiracy theories often emerge. The Mandela Effect, a phenomenon where collective memories differ from documented historical events. Some theorists link this phenomenon to CERN, suggesting its experiments have caused rifts in reality. The origin story of the Mandela Effect can be traced back to a specific incident involving Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa. The term Mandela Effect itself was coined by Fiona Broom, a self-described paranormal consultant during a conversation at DragonCon, a science fiction and fantasy convention in 2010. The specific incident that gave rise to the Mandela Effect occurred when Nelson Mandela passed away on December 5th, 2013. Many people distinctly remembered that Mandela had died in prison during the 1980s, even though he was released in 1990 and went on to become president of South Africa. This stark discrepancy between the collective memory of the world that he died in prison in the 1980s, false memory of his death, was just one example of a broader pattern. Since then, the Mandela effect has grown into a popular subject of discussion on the internet and has expanded to encompass a wide range of examples beyond Nelson Mandela, such as the spelling of the Bernstein Bears, the Monopoly Man and his monocle, details about movie quotes, logos, and other historical events. It has become a fascinating topic for those interested in memory, psychology, and speculative theories about parallel universes or alternate realities. So some speculate that the Mandela Effect proves that CERN's high energy experiments might create conditions that allow for the existence of parallel universes, leading to the Mandela Effect as memories bleed across different realities. Now, I know this is something that enters most people's minds after their first glance at CERN's headquarters, the Shiva statue, a striking and symbolic sculpture located in front of CERN's headquarters, has been at the center of controversy and conspiracy theories. And as it should be, since the god Shiva seems like the last thing that a group of scientists would pay tribute to and build a statue for. I mean, the facility is in Europe, so why not go like Zeus or Odin? Either way, no matter the god, it doesn't matter. It still seems weird. What do you guys think the real reason is for putting a god in front of the world's most advanced scientific facility? The Shiva statue was apparently a gift from the Indian government to CERN. It stands prominently near the main entrance of CERN's campus. The statue depicts Lord Shiva, a principal deity in Hinduism, performing the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. In Hindu mythology, Shiva's dance symbolizes the cyclical and rhythmic nature of the universe, representing both the creation and dissolution of cosmic energies. The statue serves as a metaphor for the fundamental forces and energies that certain scientists seek to understand. And if this isn't an indicator that there may be a relationship between spirituality and science, then we're really getting close to that point. So the conspiracy theories surrounding the Shiva statue have arisen due to a meaning of its symbolism and purpose. The theorists allege that the statue represents CERN's involvement in occult practices, or that it's a nod to destructive forces. These claims often draw connections between the statue's dance and CERN's particle experiments, suggesting sinister motives.
2016, a group of students played a prank near the Shiva statue, which later fueled further speculation and conspiracy theories. The students staged a mock ritual in front of the statue, creating an atmosphere of mystery and intrigue. The hoax, however, was intended purely for fun and was not endorsed or organized by CERN itself. Unfortunately, the incident was misinterpreted by some as evidence of occult practices or secret ceremonies at CERN, contributing to the existing conspiracy theories. Legendary physicist Stephen Hawking was not only fascinated by the universe's mysteries, but also vocal in supporting CERN's experiments. His endorsements contributed to dispelling some conspiracy theories, but the fears were still loud and growing in number. And with these concerns, CERN emphasized rigorous safety protocols in its experiments. Numerous checks and balances are put into place to ensure the safety of both the scientists and the planet. CERN's experiments continue to push the boundaries of particle physics. Researchers are hunting for new particles that could revolutionize our understanding of the universe. The discovery of the Higgs boson at CERN has paved the way for new technology and applications including advancements in medical imaging and energy storage. CERN's expertise in particle detection technology has found applications in climate science, aiding in the study of cosmic rays and their influence on Earth's climate. CERN's outreach efforts inspire young minds to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, ensuring a brighter future for scientific exploration. And CERN's experiments are definitely not limited to particle physics. They also contribute to our understanding of dark energy, a mysterious force driving the universe's expansion. The same expansion that is pulling galaxies away at a speed faster than light. Artificial intelligence plays a growing role at CERN, helping analyze vast amounts of data and improving the efficiency of these experiments. CERN's cutting edge technology from advanced particle detectors to supercomputing drives innovation in various fields beyond particle physics. The future of CERN holds even more groundbreaking discoveries as it plans to upgrade the LXC more and more throughout the years and embark on new experiments to unlock the universe's deepest secrets. So in closing, CERN stands as a beacon of human curiosity, where the relentless pursuit of knowledge drives us to explore the mysteries of the universe, unraveling this enigma of reality while inspiring generations to dream, discover, and innovate. And yes, there are some concerns regarding CERN, like the causing of timelines possibly being split in forms like the Mandela Effect, or the possibility of smashing atoms at such high speeds, possibly causing a black hole to emerge here on Earth and the disruption of Earth's magnetic field. Though some of these are a lot harder to grasp than others, I do believe that the thing we can most likely affect is the Earth's magnetic field. Especially with the ever increase of power achieved by CERN and the LXC, there's no telling if we would ever generate enough power to destroy our field and cause solar winds to flood the Earth. It is something that needs to be looked into in my honest opinion. And if we can, I also believe that experiments like these may need to be performed in space for the safety of Earth. And hell, we may even achieve better results running these experiments up there. In any case, it seems like so far CERN is not responsible for any of these occurrences and wouldn't be able to produce enough energy to do so. So there's definitely more pros than cons, but who knows? It could be a double-edged sword in the future. Let me know what you guys really feel. Do you think there's occult workings happening here? Do you feel that this machine, the LXC, can cause catastrophic disasters such as black holes? And timeline shifts so let me know down below in the comments please like and subscribe and be safe everyone